Welcome to the Chomp Man tutorial series. Based on the beloved classic arcade game Pac-Man, this project was created to be an easy to follow step-by-step -step guide that would give you the tools, techniques, and experience of creating a full game from start to finish. We've made all the original assets that we created for the game completely free. Links in the description below. For this project, if you wish to follow along step by step, you will need to first download the Chompman project files, both of which can be downloaded in the downloads area of the tutorial site or from links in the description. In this Games Without Code Bolt video, we're going to continue developing our gameplay by adding our dots and power up spawning and our player loss mechanics and game over screen and functionality. So we'll start by creating two empty game objects and we're going to name one of these game objects stage manager and we're going to name the other one game manager. And we're going to put both of these under our scene manager. Next we're going to create a state machine for our game manager and we're going to create a new macro and we're going to save that in our macro folder and we're going to call our macro game manager macro. Next, we're going to create a state machine for our stage manager and we're going to create a macro and we're going to call that stage manager macro. So with that complete, the next thing we want to do is we want to create an application integer variable and we're going to call this current level and we're going to set that value to one. Next, we want to go into our stage manager state machine graph and we're going to create a super state and we're going to call this level 01. And next, we need to create a transition from our start into our level 01 super state. And we're going to go inside of our transition. So in this transition, we want to see if our current level is equal to level 1. So we're going to drag our current level into our scene. And then next, we're going to get a equal to math node, get a integer node, and we're just going to set that to 1. And from there, we want to get a branch node. And we want to have that say if that is true, we want it to trigger our transition. We're going to put that on a on interstate node. And let's change our start. And we're going to change the name of our start. And we're going to make this a level start. Next, let's go to our level 01 state and let's change the name to our start and we're going to say start level. Now, before we begin, let's go over the logic that we're going to house in our start level. So when the level starts, we want it to spawn our dots as well as our power pellets. And we also want it to count the number of dots that we have in our scene because we're going to use that number to trigger our level completion. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to go to our dots game object and we're going to rename this to maze 01 dots. And we're going to do that to our power pellets as well. And then we're going to drag these down in our prefabs and we're going to make a prefab of our dots as well as our power pellets. So to begin, we want to create two object game object variables and we're going to name the first one maze 01 dots prefab and we're going to name the second one maze 01 power pellets prefab and we want to place our dots prefab in our dots game object variable and we want to place the maze 01 power pellets prefab in our maze 01 power pellets prefab game object variable and second we want to create one scene variable and we're going to call that current dot amount and we want that to be an integer Next, we want to use a game object instance node. And the object that we want to instance is our dots prefab. Then we want to duplicate that node and use the duplicate to make an instance of our power pellets prefab. Next, we want to create a find game objects with tags node. 
and for the tag that we wanted to find is the dots tag. And from there, we want to make a count items node. And we want to connect that count items node to the set current dot amount variable. So now that we've finished our first part, before we hit play, we need to delete our maze 01 dots and we also need to delete our maze 01 power pellets from our scene. So let's hit play to test that out. So we can now see that we started up our scene that in our stage manager state machine, it's going to our stage 01. And if we go into our start stage, we can see that it has instantiated our dots. We can see our dots instantiated our dot clone on here, as well as our power pellets. And if we go into our scene object variables, we can see that we have the current amount of our dots, which is 158. So before we move on, let's create a ready screen that allows our player time to get ready before they play the game once they're loaded into the level. So let's go into our UI elements game object in our canvas and let's right click and we're going to create a UI panel. So let's also move our canvas a little bit closer to the camera. So our UI panel is displayed in front of our screen. So we're going to go to our canvas and on our plane distance, we're just going to shorten that and we're going to take that to about 10 so we can have our overlay on top of, of our panel. And we're also going to right click and let's create a new game object. And we're going to name this game object screen overlay group. And we're going to put our panel inside of our screen overlay group. And we're also going to adjust this color just to a little bit of a, a lighter gray. And we're going to call this screen overlay. And next we're going to create a text UI and we're going to create that in our screen overlay group. And let's change our font and let's increase our text size. And let's also using our anchor point presets, holding shift and alt. And we're going to make sure that this is covering our entire screen. And let's also go to our screen overlay. I'm just going to make sure that both of these encompassing our entire screen and let's go to our text. I'm going to change the name of this to screen overlay text. And we're going to center this in the center of our screen and let's change the color. And let's scale this a little bit bigger as well. And let's go to choose our best fit. And we're going to make our maximum size 300 and our minimum size 200. We could turn off our raycast target since we, the player is not going to be interacting with our text, but we want to make sure that's still on for our screen overlay because we don't want the player to actually be able to interact with anything while the screen overlay is on our screen. Next, we want to create two scene game object variables to represent our screen overlay group as well as our screen overlay text. And we want to place our screen overlays group in our screen overlay game object. And we want to place our screen overlay text in our screen overlay text game object variable. And then we want to create a scene boolean variable and we're going to call this boolean variable can start game next we want to go to our stage manager graph and we're going to go back and we're going to go to our level 01 state and we want to create a new flow state and we're going to call this countdown and we're going to create a transition and in the transition we're just going to say on enter state now let's go to our countdown state so the logic that we want to put in our countdown state is we want the player to be met with the ready message on the initial launch of the level. And after that, we want it to count down to three, two, one. And then once it reaches zero, our overlay state is deactivated and the player can now move. 
We also don't want the player or the ghost to be able to move while they're waiting for the game to start. So to do this, we first want to start with a game object set active. And the game object that we want to set is our screen overlay object. From there, we want to get a set text node. And in the text that we want to set is we wanted to set the screen overlay text object text. So to do that, we also need to get the component of our screen overlay text object variable. So we want to get our text component. And for the first text, we're going to just say ready. At that point, we wanted to go to a wait for seconds node. And for the delay, we just want that delay to be one second. And from that point, we can duplicate our set text node as well as our wait node. And for the next text, we want it to be three. And we, we're going to have our delay as one. And we're going to continue to do this going from three to one. And each time it's going to wait a second. We're also going to use another game object set active node. After the last second, we want it to go to a set variable node and variable that we want to set is our can start. And we want to set that to true. And we want to set our screen overlay object variable and we want to set that to false. And lastly, we need to go back into our main state of our state manager and we're going to our level and we're going to change this. Let's change this to level picker. And in this state, what we want to do on our on enter is we want to set the can start to false. So we want to ensure that that's false when the game starts. So now let's go and let's test that out and make sure everything's working correctly before we move on. And before we test this, let's also deactivate our screen overlay just to make sure that it's going to it's activating our screen overlay at the start. We can see our screen overlay is active. We have the, our countdown starting. Um, if we go into our scene variables, we can see that the can start is off. And we're going to hit play. And then we can see that our can start game is now set to true and our screen overlay is deactivated. So next, let's put in the functionality that disables our ghost and our player at the start of the game. So let's start with our ghost first. So we're going to go to our ghost state machine graph and we're going to say on our ghost red. So we want it to be able to get our ghost colors and sort our ghost before we disable their functionality. So we're going to go inside of their movement state and we're going to create another state and we're going to create this right before our chase. So we're going to create another flow state and we're going to call this waiting. And then we're going to toggle this to start and we're going to disable the toggle start for our chase. And from here, we're going to make a transition. And in that transition, we want to use a branch node to check if the can start game is true. And we're going to have that check every frame. And for the moment, let's go in our waiting. We're just going to remove our update and our on on enter state. Next, let's select our chomp character. And if we recall, we have a flow machine on our, our chomp character and we have a state machine on our chomp character as well. So our movement is controlled in our flow machine. So what we're going to do is we're just going to move all of this into our state machine. So let's go into our state machine and we're going to right click and we're going to create a new super state. And we're just going to call this player input. And we also want to toggle this to start. And let's go inside of our, our new player input state. And we're going to have this one start. We're going to change this to waiting. 
and we want to create a, another flow state and we're going to call that input manager and we're going to make a transition and just like with the ghost we're going to use our use a branch to check if our can start game is true and let's go inside of our waiting we're just going to remove our update and our exit for now and now let's go to our flow state what we're going to do on this one is we're simply just going to select all these and copy all these and we're going to go back to our state machine in our input manager delete this and we're just going to paste these in and let's disable our flow state for now so with that complete let's hit play and test that out so far so we can see we're in our waiting state and while a countdown is going on the ghost is no longer able to move and our controls were no longer able to move as well and as soon as the countdown is done we see that our can start game is true we are in we are in our input manager for our chomp character uh, as well as our ghost now going to their chase mode So with that complete, let's move on to creating our winning and losing mechanics and scenarios. To do this, we'll be using both our game manager and our stage manager. So something to note when differentiating the two, the game manager will only consist of functions we'll be using throughout our game despite the stage. And the stage manager, on the other hand, will consist of functions that are mainly stage specific. For example, the dots and power pellets prefabs were laid out for this map specifically, so spawning them is a stage specific function. On the other hand, the player's score and the amount of lives we have left is something that needs to be managed despite which map or stage the player happens to be on. With that said, let's create a level complete and player was killed super state in our game manager. Next, we want to create an any state. Now, an any state is unique because much like the any state in Mechanim, it can trigger transitions to another state no matter which state is currently active. However, this state can't receive any transmissions or execute any actions. And we're going to make a transition from our any state to our player was killed. And in this transition, we're going to simply check for our scene boolean variable player was killed. So next we're going to go to our player was killed state. And for our start state, we're going to change that to subtract life. And let's go into our state. So the first thing that we want to do in this state is we want to add a new integer application variable and we're going to name that variable player lives left. So in this state, we simply want to subtract one from the player lives left variable. And then we want to use that to set our new player lives value. Next, we want to create two states and we're going to call one respawn and we're going to call the second one game over. So we're going to make a transition from our subtract life to our respawn. And in our transition, we simply want to check that the player's lives left isn't below zero. So we're going to get our application players live left variable and then we're going to create a less than node and the number that we want to say is less than is zero. And then we're going to connect that to our trigger transition. And 
and we're going to connect this to false. So if the amount of players lives left is not less than zero, we want it to go to our respawn transition. And next we're going to copy these nodes and let's go make a transition from our subtractor life to our game over. And in this one, we're just going to essentially say, if that's true, that our player has less than zero lives, we want to go to our game over state. Next, we want to create two application Boolean variables and we're going to call the first is game over and we're going to call the second can player respawn. So in both our can respawn and our game over states, we're simply just going to be setting these Boolean variables to true. Next, let's go back into our stage manager and we're going to create another state and we're going to call this state player respawn. And then we're going to duplicate this and we're going to call this player game over. Next, we're going to make transitions from our level 01 to our player respawn and our player game over. And in these transitions, we're simply going to check that if our application is game over or our application can player respawn are true. Next, we're going to copy our code and we're going to go into our game over transition and we're just going to change this variable to be our is game over. So with our transitions created, let's go into our game over state. So before we start creating our nodes for the state, let's first go over the logic and what we want to happen in our game over state. So in our game over state, we essentially want it to display our screen overlay back to the player saying that the game is over. And we also wanted to save the player's current score, which will allow us to create a scoreboard from past games or other users. And lastly, we wanted to allow the users to go back to the main menu of our game, which will allow them to continue playing the game from the beginning if they choose. So first we're going to create a game object set active node. And then we're going to connect our screen overlay object. And we're going to make sure that our value is checked. Next, we want to create a set text node and the text that we're going to be setting is for our screen overlay text. So let's bring in our screen overlay text node and we want to get that text component. And we're going to set that text and we want that text to be set to game over. Next, let's create an application variable, which we're going to name player in score. And then let's use our player score to set our player in score value. And let's change our player score value. We're going to change that to an application variable since we'll be using that for multiple stages throughout our game. Next, let's create two scene game object variables and we want these variables to be our screen overlay score and we want these to be our screen overlay main menu button. We want to wait a few seconds and then we want to give the player the option to go back to the main menu to start a new game.
So at the end of the game, we also wanted to display the player's end score. And lastly, let's create another set text node. And we're just going to duplicate our set text and our get component nodes. So in the text that we wanted to display is our game in score text. To do that, we need to convert that integer into a string. And then we're going to plug that back into our weight node. So let's create the screen UR elements for our screen overlay in score and for our main menu button. So we're going to go to our UI elements on our canvas and let's enable our screen overlay group. And we're going to duplicate this, change that to end score. And now let's move this down a bit. And we're going to convert this back to arrow because this will be displaying our score. And let's change our minimum size to 150. And let's go with the white text, just the white for color, just so we can get that to kind of stand out a little bit more. And now let's go and we're going to right click and we're going to create a, a UI button. And let's go into our UI sprite sheet and see if we can find a sprite that will work for our returning to our main menu. And let's just go with our return sprite. And we're just going to drag that into our image component. We want to preserve that aspect ratio. And now let's go place them within our scene variables. And we're just going to convert those to game objects. And we're just going to drag and drop those in. So now let's go back into our parent state. We're going to create another state. And we're going to call this state load main menu. And we're going to make a transition to the state and inside our transition we want to use the same logic that we use for our main menu so we're going to do a on button click event and for the button we're going to get the component from our screen overlay main menu button object we just created And inside our low main menu state, we just simply want to use our on enter state and we're going to have that go to a load scene manager node and we're going to have that node load our main menu scene. And the scene that we want it to load is our main menu. We're going to put that in with a stream. So we're just going to copy this and we're going to paste this in here. 
So before we test out our functionality, let's go to our level 01. So we're going to go to our countdown and in our countdown, we want to make sure that our screen overlay score and our screen overlay main menu button are deactivated. So one more thing that we need to do before we test this out is we need to go into our dots prefabs as well as a power pellet prefab and we need to change the scene player score to the application player score we just created. And let's also change that within our scene manager as well. So now that that's complete, let's hit play and test out our functionality. We're going to ensure that our player's last left is value of zero. Now that we have our game over screen, our game over states working correctly, in the next video, we'll add our level win mechanics as well as continuing to develop our ghost AI. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, interviews, and free game asset giveaways.